What's going on? It's your boy Lucas. I'll go back at it again. Today, I'm not sponsored by this company. But this company, if you're watching this video, please sponsor me. I would love it. I would do probably about 15 videos with one sponsor. Um, yeah. Alright. I've already opened this box. Mystery Tackle Box. It's my first box. And I was pumped about it. Mystery tech box. Sorry about that. My mom made me this beautiful dinner. I got broccoli, salmon, and yellow rice. Love it. I'm gonna uh, say a prayer and get right back to you. Alright, say my prayer now. Ooh, that fork, this fork is hot. Oh god. Got some broccoli. No. Most kids don't like broccoli. How can you not like broccoli? I love broccoli. You think? All right, I'm back. All right, all right. Um. Sorry, my mom couldn't find the remote, so I had to get my phone and turn the TV on. Anyhow, I love broccoli, and this is an epic dinner, and I'm going to finish it and then get right back. Alright, I'm done. That was good. Anyhow, back to the mystery tackle box. Oh, excuse me. There's my name on the box. Clarify it is mine. I've already opened it like four times, but that would be a good idea to do an unboxing after unboxing. So I'm going to take y'all into the shed and uh, put y'all on the camera stand and do an unboxing video. All right, I'm going into the shed. Got the mystery tackle box. I'm so excited, man. Um, got something in my eye. Here we go. Now, this is the box. Now, normally this is a $20 box. This is the, I don't know what kind of box. It was the cheapest box. I love this about Mystery Tackle Box. It's got a, rule, it's got a measuring tape and everything on it. So, first thing you see, nice top water hypo twist by Weston I don't know how to say the other word it's a floating 5 8 ounce I guess walking bait or something like that put that to the side then we have a reaction strike top extreme rip top water I'm guessing this is a walking bait pretty nice color on it okay then you see these high tide quarter ounce jig heads. Oh, let me say something real quick. The this is the inshore saltwater um, box or version of the box. So yeah, all this is for saltwater. Then we have these big bite bait saltwater baits. This is for uh, redfish, flounder, and speckled trout. It's an electric chicken. It has it's fortified with bite juice. It's a jointed minnow, jerk minnow. So you can put the jig, these on the jig heads. And like I said, this is electric chicken color. Apparently that's a good color for um, uh, crappie too. If you have little crappie jigs. So here is the what's inside note thing. Here's a Ketchco uh, sticker. As you, can, as you can see right there, inshore saltwater box. 
last but not least, the 6 inch Swimmer Z from Z Man and Elastec, the swimmers. Alright, so let's go through detail by detail. I love the box, the box is cool. Alright, so detail by detail. Let's look at the what's inside. We have the Weston Hypo Twist. And let me tell you something real quick. I paid, this box is normally $20, okay? $20. I had a coupon code that dropped it down to $10. I don't know what it was. My aunt, my cousin sent it, was telling me about it, and then, so I went online and bought one. But I don't know the code because my aunt texted my mom the code. So, $10 I paid for this box, okay? The Reaction Hypo Twist, which is this, I mean, Weston Hypo Twist, is $14. This bait right here is $14. Okay. Which is a, almost 150% of the price. Then we have the Reaction Strike XTR, which is this. $8. So right there, that's $22. That's over the price in two baits that I would normally have to pay. Here is the Z-Man Swimmer Z. $7. Then we have the Big Bite Baits. Oh wait, no, sorry. The, curl, the High Tide Jig. $4. That means this this is a four. I didn't even show you that. This is a four pack of jig heads. Okay, each jig has a, is a dollar. It's pretty expensive. Then we have the big bite baits, curly curly tail jointed jer jerk minnow. I left off with the jointed jerk minnow. Um, and then electric chicken. So this all adds up. Let me do the math. 22 plus 7, that's 29, plus 4, that's 33, plus 4, that's $37, okay, $37, I paid $10 for the box, I highly recommend Mystery Tackle Box, and this is a normal, normally $20 box, I got it for $10, I've been seeing a whole bunch of ads on YouTube for Mystery Tackle Box, that is like, try mtb 10 and it drops it drops it it's like a 50 percent off coupon code so i highly recommend it i don't know what this code was i don't know if it was the same code or not but i just saw the ad for try mtb 10 i mean yeah mtb so i highly recommend these boxes um i got and i also got a catch co sticker I don't know if y'all can see the co right there. But this is like who supplies Mystery Tackle Box with all the baits. They, uh, basically it's like Carl's Bait and Tackle except bigger, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But this right here is a $14 bait. After tax, it is probably about $15 bait, bait if you buy it somewhere alone. This is the entire box plus some. 150% of the price is just in this bait. Okay. I was not expecting, like, when I, I was expecting some jig heads, maybe like a sabiki rig, or may, maybe some big bite baits. I was expecting big bite baits, but maybe like little bitty stuff, some gulp, just cheap stuff, you know. I was not expecting a $14 bait in a $10 box. Not expecting it. So, like I said, I highly recommend it, and um, I'm not sponsored by it, but this is, this is the Inshore Saltwater Bait. Sap all over me. This is the Inshore Saltwater Bait, which I could see catching like a redfish or flounder. I wanted to see a flounder, but redfish or a speckled trout on, on this. Just because that's what it's like, it's that size. And this box is in short salt water, flounder, redfish, speckled trout. This bait, though, this is a six inch long minnow. Well, 
I'm gonna call it a mullet because that's what it's the size of it. Mullet, right? You ain't gonna catch a speckled trout on this. This is more for like bull reds or jacks, Jack Ravel. You ain't gonna catch no speckled trout on this or even a small red. Or maybe even not even a small jack. Like this this is a six inch long mullet. There ain't too many things that eat a six inch long mullet. So this, I have a spot, actually I have two spots I could use this, one, both of them are in Alabama, one's in central Alabama, at my, one of our friend's farms, it's a, it's a freshwater farm, well freshwater pond, but they have, I think the biggest bass they caught in there was 12 pounds, and I think, or 12 or 14 pounds, I could definitely catch something like this on there because they have slab bluegill in there. They're literally two pound bluegill. Well, I won't say two pounds, but a pound and a half bluegill that are literally this long that I could see in bass. There's big enough bass in that pond to eat the or lake to eat a bluegill that size. So they could definitely eat something like this. The bluegill is literally the size of here from here to here. Like that's a big bluegill. So, I could definitely use the, these there. And then in Gulf Shore State Park, Gulf Shore State Park, right on the line between Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama, they have the Gulf Shore State Park Pier. I can't remember if it's October or December is when the redfish and the jackravel start to run. That's when I could use these baits because you'll look down before the redfish and everything start running at that day and you all you will see is fish and the water's crystal clear you can see 30 feet down without it, it you can see perfectly like there is no water and you, all you'll just see a big giant school of pinfish and mullet and all these bait fish pogies all of this and they're all about four inches long now they have some six inches they have some ten inches they have some two inches you know you get a sabiki rig you drop it down get a stringer like that it's literally, you drop it down, you reel it up, and you have a stringer. Like, there's so many fish. Then, about 15 minutes goes by, the water turns white with redfish and jackravel. And everybody goes to the very end of the pier and just starts casting. You have to have these big, heavy rods. Like, like we had this rod. This rod right here. Not this setup, but this rod. And reel. And bigger reels than this. This is a cat. This is a cat stick. Um, I don't know what model. It doesn't say what model, but this is a a Shakespeare brand. Then we had some of these, which this 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 one's broken. But these are basically surf rods. They're like eight foot rods. Eight foot. This this reel's broken the handles missing but reels this size I mean that's a pretty big reel you know and just you hook up pops the line like that you need to have like 50 pound test uh, reel I mean um, sp spooled up and it's just like one after everybody casts out everybody hooks up I got I started running because it was just now starting and the jack Jacks and Reds start running from right here, and they all they go all the way around, and then everything's covered. 50 yards, 60 yards out, still just white. So, you cast out there, and it had just started on this side of the pier, okay? So, I ran over there. Well, people are so excited, they don't look behind them when they go to cast. And people are using, I don't know what the rig's called, but basically it's a glass bobber that you fill up with water and it's for um, hook shy fish and it's a little green straw thing it's a rubber straw but the tr it's all it is is a leader they slide they put a treble hook on it and they slide like a green rubber tube on it uh, you've probably heard of it or some of y'all have probably heard of it and then it's a barrel swivel and then it goes up a little bit or but it's about this long which is about two three foot and they it's a clear bobber that you put a little water in and it helps you cast real far. And the bobber floats, of course. It's 
hollow, so you pop it open, fill it halfway up with water, close it, cast it out, and that's basically your weight. And then you slowly like pop it or reel it or reel pause, reel pause, reel pause, and just work it different ways. And uh, Spanish mackerel, uh, any, basically any kind of mackerel will come up for it. Some jack, some reds, speckled trout, anything will come up for it. And they bust on the tube and you set the hook and you got one. Um, so they, they were using that. And they get so excited that, you know, most people, I don't know, I was raised like this. I don't know if everybody was raised like this. But when you go to cast, you always look behind you. So you could hook somebody. You could get in a tree. You could snag up somebody else's line. You could snag anything. You know, you could snag somebody. It Like, you could reach back and get somebody's eye and pull their eye out, you know. So, you always look behind you. Well, these probably 40 year old people are sitting there and they're just casting real cast real be cast yeah um and it was just they weren't looking behind them and I wasn't paying attention to that either I was running to go get the go to the reds the jacks because they had just started to run and uh I know it was stupid on my part I'm half to blame but they should look behind them I'm not saying they're it's their fault it's my fault too but Always look behind you, please, when you're on a pier or anywhere fishing with other people. Even if you're not fishing with other people, there could be a tree behind you and you could get your $30 lure stuck in it. Which, I don't know why you would be fishing with a $30 lure unless it's a swim bait, but yeah. Um, but look behind you, because I got hooked in the shirt with a treble hook. And it could have been my, like, my neck, and he went to go cast, and, like, he didn't know I was there. You know, they had to cut my shirt and everything, so... Now I'm holding one of these, sh one of the shirts. <laughs> but um, I mean, it could have been in my neck. It could have hooked my throat and killed me. You know, could have hooked my eye. Like there's, I got the least of it. Well, I mean, the least of it could have been him missing me. But yeah, <laughs> thankfully it grabbed my shirt and not my neck or something because I really don't feel like having to go to a hospital to get a hook out. So please look behind you, people. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, that's a story I had to tell. Anywho, um, that's two places I could use these. And these are mullet colored. It doesn't have, like, the actual color on there. Yeah, it doesn't have the color on. But basically, you can either rig it up with a jig head, a weighted Texas, like, a weighted worm hook, or a normal Texas rig, which is a worm hook with a bullet weight. Then these, you could put the jig heads on, because they're that size. And then th these two, you just tie on and throw them out. So, uh, again, highly recommend Mystery Tackle Box, and also look behind you when you go to cast. I know that has nothing to do with this video, but yeah. So, uh, thanks for watching. I know in the start of this video, you saw my new logo. If you haven't seen that other video I just posted with the new logo video, um, go and watch it. My opinion is pretty nice. Um, tell me if you like it. I like it. I'm thinking about airbrushing it onto my kayak. That also brings me to another subject. With lure making, I bought myself an airbrush to make some good, decent lures. Instead of crappy lures that look like this and this. I also bought myself some split rings and airbrush paints. Now, I'm going to have to buy some more airbrush paints just because these are standard colors. But, yeah. Oh, and then this awesome looking air hose. Look at how cool this looks. I like it. It is um, the same hose at Hobby Lobby. I think it was close to $30. That one at Harbor Freight was $8. So make sure you check a bunch of stores before you just go to Hobby Lobby. Not saying Hobby Lobby is bad. Not saying that. I love going to Hobby Lobby. That's where I bought the split rings from. And I almost bought an airbrush from, but then I it wasn't the right airbrush, so I, I didn't buy it. But yep. Yeah. Oh, um, one more thing. I just saw this out of the corner of my eye. I don't know if y'all know what this is. Comment below if you do. 
give you a minute to go press pause and go comment. This, my friends, is, I'm going to start making these videos too, hopefully. Bank weight molds. I have my great grandpa fenders, my grandmother, my mom's mother's father used to go to the shooting ranges with a, uh, a metal detector and he would get all the lead and make jig heads and bank molds and bullet weights and all that good stuff. When he died, he gave it all to my mother's brother, my uncle. My uncle. So it's been sitting in my uncle's house for, or his old house for God knows how long, in his attic. And all this stuff he gave me was strictly just in some cabinets, some of his cabinets. This is a um, lead ladle. You put the lead in here and you melt it. And then these are some awesome looking tongs. I got some pretty cool tongs. You can grab the grab the ladle with these if you don't have any gloves and pour it like that. But yeah, he gave me this all this because I really wanted to start making my own bullet weights, making my making my own jig heads. He said he hasn't found the jig heads yet, but that's also because he hasn't really looked. He just looked in one of his cabinets, and he saw those, and he said, hey, Lucas was looking for them. So, yeah. Um, my grandpa, he's giving me, or letting me borrow a vise, a drill press vise. So I'm ho hoping, as you can see, I tried to kind of do it, put feather, make feathered treble hooks. And that I just got, I just cut a feather and kind of trimmed it and put a dab of super glue. So, didn't work too well. But, it's on there. Works good enough. But, uh, so I'm going to try to go make my own jig heads and everything. And then once I get the vise, I have a ton of treble hooks. And I, I tried to get into sewing, but that didn't really work too well. So, but yeah, so much for that. But, yeah, I'm gonna, I have a ton of thread, and so I can tie some. I have a chunk of meat stuck in my tooth, and it's annoying. I, uh, I'm gonna try to start making tr feather treble hooks, and chick heads, and stuff like that. If I do manage to do both of those, I can make, um, bucktail jigs. That would be cool. I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. You know why I say that? Because I was on Facebook looking at trying to find trying to find to buy some lead ingots. And about two years ago, I hold on, let me show you. So we have close up on my ugly face. Lead ingots, okay. And steel ingots I guess you could call this this was left here with the house and I thought this was a steel ingot and this was the lead ingot so I grabbed the lead ingot we used to have two of these we still have two of these I said hey I'm gonna try to make a sword also idiotic of me so I started a fire put some charcoal in it drop one of these son of a guns in there Come back later, it's gone. I'm like, hold up now, where'd this thing go? Dug through the charcoal a little bit, found it. You ever watch some videos where people melt aluminum and pour it down ant piles? Yeah, that's what it looked like in this charcoal. Just, yeah. So, this is steel. This is lead. And I just looked up and saw it, so now I can make weights. Thanks for watching, I love ya. I'm going to say it one more time. I should have said it in the be beginning of this video, which I'm probably going to edit that in. And now I'm sideways, so I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, please, if you're still watching this, please, 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 please give me some video ideas. That's why I haven't been posting, because I've trying to been 
Am I still sideways? I don't know if I'm still sideways. Wait, no, I'm not sideways anymore. I just paused the video. I've been trying to put, find some video ideas, and I don't have any. You know, I had all these great ideas before I started a YouTube channel. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, do a ton of stuff, and then reality hit me. Hey, I'm not 16. I can't just drive around and go fishing and hunting and all that goodness. My parents have to take me, and my parents don't want to be on camera, so screw that idea. <laughs> so after I started the YouTube channel, I was like, oh. That was smart. <laughs> so, please give me some video ideas, and I love you, and I'll see you next time.